Introduction, Splunk is one of the leading Seam solutions in the market. It provides the ability to collect, analyze, and correlate the network and machine logs in real time. And in this room, we'll explore the basics of Splunk and its functionalities and how it provides better visibility of network activities and help in speeding up detection. You know, like actually in the real sense of it, Splunk was actually made to be a, a data analytics tool, not a security tool. And then they were like, oh, we can make so much money from doing security. Stuff. And then it became a security tool, a sim. But yeah, that's so crazy. And that also points back to the fact that a lot of data analytical sort of like domains apply very much to security all right so let's get to the next stage of things so we're going to look at splunk overview components different ways to ingest logs and then normalization of logs this is very i think this is less like security oriented well not security oriented this is more of like this is very good to learn if you're going to be a detection engineer in the sense that you're going to be doing a lot with like architecture of your sim and also ingest ingestion of logs and normalization of logs beyond just like the security knowledge being able to like kind of configure the platform in a way that helps you do your detection well is actually really important all right let's get started with the splunk components so Splunk has like a little moving pieces within it. Let's see if I'm not too big here. All right, so Splunk has three main components, namely the forwarder, the indexer, and the search head. These components I explained below. And I think, well, before we actually go into these different components, I think it's important to highlight like why why is it like so complex like out like i guess in, in this sense in the terms of having an indexer a search head in a forwarder i think because when you're dealing with a large amount of data it's very important to like decouple the systems that store the data that process the data actually first the system that send the data that store the data and then the system that retrieve the data because if you have everything just like all in like a single system that's like a single point of failure but if it's decoupled right in the sense that there are different aspects to it then you know like it's not a single point of failure in that sense that's why i think there's like different there's different aspects of it because ultimately if it's just one single system that might actually even be a, like way too resource intensive in, in general right ultimately the splunk florida is a lightweight agent that's installed on an endpoint intended to be monitored and its main task is to collect the data and send it to the Splunk instance. It does not affect the endpoint's performance as it takes very few resources to process. Some of the key data sources are web server generating web traffic, Windows machine generating Windows event logs, PowerShell. And by the way, if you're not familiar with PowerShell, PowerShell is a task automation and configuration management program from Microsoft consistent of a command line shell and the associated scripting language. Basically, it's a powerful shell. It's a powerful language you can use for a lot of really, really amazing things within, within Windows. And then of, of course, Sysmon data. Now, Linux hosts generating host-centric logs. If you're not familiar with Linux, uh, Linux is a command line operating system based on Unix, and there are multiple operating systems that are based on Linux. And finally, you have the database generating DB connections, requests, responses, and errors. So this is not the limitation that you have with Splunk. Uh, obviously, you can also like monitor your cloud data with Splunk, or you can monitor a bunch of different things with Splunk. As a matter of fact, when I started learning about Splunk, when I got my, my core user like a couple years ago, initially, a lot of what was being analyzed with Splunk was like IoT, IoT device data right? So even those small systems, like those systems that my sim is insignificant, do have their telemetry that they, that they generate. And Splunk is a good way by which you can actually aggregate, search, store the telemetry, you know, to find context within it for whatever the case may be. And we have this really nice sort of a diagram here. So showing like Linux telemetry, showing uh, Windows telemetry, maybe some some web telemetry, database telemetry, and even your, your, your Apple telemetry as well, like where that's like your Macs, right? If you're familiar with like detection engineering, there's a whole subset of like, you know, research in Mac based threats because there are a lot of organizations that use Macs. So understand how to like send that data maybe to Splunk and also like utilize that data for like detection use cases is also important as well. No one's left out. All right. So we just went over what the forwarder is, right? The forwarder essentially forwards data, it moves data from the endpoint into the Splunk system or your Splunk instance. The Splunk indexer plays the main role in processing the data it receives from the forwarders. It takes the data, normalizes it into Field value pairs determines the data type of the data and stores them as events. Process data is easy to search and analyze. So when the forwarder sends data into your Splunk system, the Splunk indexer essentially processes that data that is received from the forwarder. And then it normalizes that data into field value pairs, essentially like those different attributes, which we'll probably see later on in the video uh, that categorize, you know, the, the key and the value. And then it determines the data type and then stores it as events within your Splunk instance. And that process data is easy to search and analyze. And in, in normal like database terms, this is what you, you would categorize or term as ETL, basically extract, transform and load. So basically what the indexer does is, you know, all that ETL sort of things. All right, the search head. 
So the search head is the place within the search and reporting app where users can search the indexed logs as shown below. So in here, you can see the user is searching for index equals main. And I think we'll go over what an index means later on. When the user searches for a term or uses a search language known as long search processing language, which is SPL, the request is sent to the indexer and the relevant events are returned in the form of field value peers. So essentially the search ed is the place where you actually retrieve the data that has has been normalized by the indexer. So essentially you make a request to the indexer and the relevant events are returned in form of the field value peers. So the search head also provides the ability to transform the results into presentable tables, visualizations like pie charts, bar charts, and column charts as shown below. All of this still points back to like data analysis, right? Like at the fundamentals of what we're doing, like we're analyzing data, right? And we're visualizing this data in terms of like tables, uh, pie charts, bar charts, and column charts. So there's a lot of overlap with like security analytics and data analytics because it's like it's just security data analytics in some sense and you can see here there's various possibilities here you have like these like time series these uh bar graphs pie charts and all these different you know even geo geographical charts and all those things right measurements like there's a lot of possibilities with visualizations in splunk all right so the first question here is which component is used to collect and send data over this should be over to the splunk instance this is going to be the forwarder all right let's go ahead and look into navigating splunk all right, so the Splunk bar, this is where you access Splunk and you will see the default home screen identical to the screenshot below. We're gonna take a look at this uh, when we log into Splunk, but this is the default home screen. I'm sure this is probably given like some suck analyst PTSD right now. <laughs> but yeah, this is essentially the, the default Splunk home screen. Let's look at each section or panel that makes up the home screen. The top panel is the Splunk bar. So this is the Splunk bar. Of course, you have Splunk Enterprise. You have the messages you have, the settings, the activity, help, and then find. In the Splunk bar, you can see system level messages, which is the messages. You can configure the Splunk instance in the settings. You can review the progress of jobs in the activity and then miscellaneous information such as tutorials, you can find that in help and a search feature in find. The ability to switch between installed Splunk apps instead of using the apps panel can be achieved from the Splunk bar, like in the image below. So I think the initial that we have here is like Splunk Enterprise and then app search and reporting, which I believe is like where you essentially, yeah, start from right right here. Search and reporting and the other apps that you have within your Splunk uh, instance. So the apps panel, in this panel, you can see the apps installed for the Splunk instance and the default app for every Splunk installation is the search and reporting. So this comes by default with uh, Splunk. The next section is explore Splunk. This panel contains quick links to add data to the Splunk instance, add new Splunk apps and access the Splunk documentation. It's pretty straightforward here. So you can add data. Um, this is actually cool if you're doing like CTFs or you're getting like a CSV data source from like a, I don't know, like some other platform and you want to like throw it, throw it into Splunk for like ad hoc analysis. We can also do like the Splunk apps, add-ons, Splunk calls them apps and add-ons uh, and then the Splunk documentation, which is pretty comprehensive. All right, Splunk dashboard. The last section is the home dashboard. So by default, no dashboards are displayed. You can choose from a range of dashboards readily available within your Splunk instance. You can select the dashboard from the drop-down menu or by visiting the dashboards listing page. Let's look at what that looks like. So choose a home dashboard and then you can choose the default dashboard. There's a bunch of default dashboards. These are typically called out of the box dashboards. I built a ton of them while I was at Datadog and you have a bunch of dashboards here. These are just default dashboards, right? Um, so you might have to like Build your own dashboards for your own configurations. You can also create dashboards and add them to the home dashboard. The dashboards you create can be viewed isolated from the other dashboards by clicking on the yours. Please review the Splunk documentation on navigating Splunk here. Thank you for coming to the stream and I'll see you in the next stream.